that's an older version, but it will do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't blame you. Uh, um, yeah, okay, so uh, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, so my name is Patrick Ruch, and I'm going to, to present the Biodiversity PMC. Actually, the main architects are Emily Pache and Julien Dobel, who are working at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. So, um, so just a few um, brief words about SID, and then this is the summary of my, my presentation. Um, so the SIB is the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Actually, we maintain um, a molecular biology database. Maybe some of you are familiar with Uniprot or Cellulosaurus, um, which are really a flagship in the molecular biology world. Actually, it's a relatively large institute, but 800 people. And we are engaged in a large project called the Swiss Biodata uh, Ecosystem, which is probably just delivering the largest knowledge graph of the world in biology. Um, um, so, the contribution of the knowledge graph it will include the, the, the literature, and uh, the, so we, we are maintaining this SIB literature services, so this is the paper from um, 2020, but actually we have been maintaining the service for more than 15 years. And the new thing is that it, it used to be a set of API that we use internally at SIB to support the work of the curators, and we have, a, we have about 80 full-time curators that curate the literature to find information about proteins. And uh, we, we develop services for them. And, and CBILS was one of the services, but it, it, for the front end, for the user tools, that was specific to AB database. So until 2020, we did not have any front end. Um, it is um, changing thanks to the uh, uh, bicycle project. Um, so. A few things that has changed. So the first one is the um, front end users uh, uh, graphic user interface. The other one is that we started to, to put together not only a Medline and PubMed Central, but so we also decided to work with supplementary data. There is about um, uh, 20 million uh, files, which are supplementary data files within PubMed Central. And it's found in many places. You can find it in BioStudies. You can find it in, uh, in PubMed Central, of course, but you cannot search in it because nobody thought about indexing the content. So we decided to index the content. And, and of course, about 25% uh, about of this content is images, you know, TIFF, uh, GIF, uh, JPEG. So we OCRize all the images. So you can search like if you would be searching into full text within the images. Uh, we also maintain stuff for the clinical trials, but that's really relevant here. Um, the other new um, uh, collection that we have is um, uh, the, 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 the treatment from Platzi. Um, and actually, there should be a little bit more logos here because now we have, of course, uh, all the non PMC Journal of Pensoft. We also are integrating the European Journal of Taxonomy. So um, this is only a very partial thing of what we have today within the collection. Uh, so, what is also new is this um, 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 front end. So, we have user interface and uh, the Spark QL endpoint. Okay, um, so at least the logos are here for the European Journal of Taxonomy. So we have about 60,000 um, uh, uh, publications which are not in PubMed Central, the PubMed Central maintained by the National Library of Medicine, but they are within uh, Biodiversity PMC. Um, okay, we also are working with other uh, publishers and, and EGT is clearly one of them. We are working with CTAF and discussing with also other uh, uh, publication uh, and, and, and publisher. Um, actually, so we, on top of what we do, um, we also annotate the, the, the literature with control vocabularies or ontologies. These are all the ontologies that we use. Uh, you will notice that we use, oh, it's a bit broken there, but we are using also different type of taxonomy. So we use the XC NCBI taxonomy, which is what we use in molecular biology, but we also use the uh, open tree of, of life and catalog of life. We also have a specialized um, um, uh, taxonomy like the uh, mammal diversity database and, and the ICTV for the viruses. Um, okay, all the other ones are probably, some of them are relevant actually for uh, like ECO and ENVO for the environmental uh, uh, features and traits that is also relevant for, for this field. Okay, I go on. Um, these are the annotations that we have. So all together, it's a bit more than 14 billion annotation. Um, and it's growing because we are uh, adding currently the, the chemistry. So we are working at the scale of the Lotus, Lotus project. So people want to annotate 
um, uh, botanical garden content and, and um, uh, compounds or metabolites found into, into plants. That's why we are moving ahead with the, the chemistry. I, um, this is the, the last effort with Lotus and PopChem. So only this annotation added about 1 billion new annotation. Um, okay, so okay, of course you can um, you can use the system to to read papers. I mean, of course, at the end, so you can uh, you can use them in 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 PubMed Central or at Publisher site. So the the red one is the the view you would have with with Sibyl, uh, 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 so so called biodiversity PMC. So this is very uh, very standard. Uh, we have many. Uh, again, I said if you would look for these two new species of. Uh, Aphis and so on and so on. This would not be found into a PMC. Huh? That would be only found into our collection. So together with a larger set of paper, we also have services. So we can we have quite nice services if you want to search. If you can you can try to do question answering. So you come up with a natural question, uh, natural language question, and hopefully the system will try the answer. I will show you an example. Please go ahead. We have this index of supplementary data. Actually. Probably 50% of the people searching in PMC in in, in Sibyls are looking for content into supplementary data. That was not expected, and of course we have many cross references to to Platzi, to to the publisher, and, and many others. Um, so the way we do it is because we we work with these JATs, okay, this native format for publication, and actually we develop something um, which we call precision publishing. So I can hardly zoom here, but if you look at the at the extreme um, uh, left there, you will see that we annotate entities. So we will have things like uh, uh, species. So we have uh, rhinochoris, and then you see you, you have the offset where it starts in the text, where it ends in the text. So we really can locate the mention of the, the occurrences of the term at, at the level of the text. So this is what we call also uh, evidence-based uh, uh, um, publication. Okay, so this is the, the same that we do with, with the treatment. Okay, very, very much the same things. Um, yeah, so we also have services where you can try to match um, specimen with um, uh, uh, material citation, you know. So the idea is that you, you, you can navigate. Um, of course, we, we start with JBIF. So you can, you can navigate either um, specimen collection or you can... Uh, start with citations if you want, and we try to match them together. Um, so this is this is the eBioDive matching service. So the idea would be like if you start with uh, the specimen that is there, coming from a collection from the botanical garden in Geneva, uh, then you could select a particular uh, record there, the red one, and then you would have the the similarities that would have been associated between the the query and what has been matched and then you can say you can say oh i want to establish a relationships between the two entities or i don't want so you have the yes and no uh, um, option there okay i i i, I go uh, further with this so the other thing that we do within um Sibils is what we we call the, the the data modality so okay i mentioned the fact that we work with images and we oscillate the images. So this is for the supplementary data. Um, we work with text intensively. Um, if available, we work with curated text, like for instance, Platzi has curated the, 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 the taxonomic uh, information uh, or, the, or the latitude and longitude or the coordinate GPS to exactly what uh, uh, has been uh, shown with, with, with uh, what's happening in the pens of journals. But, there is between the, the let's say the curated one and the non-curated one, you have the extracted one. So extracted one are not gold, okay? They are automatically generated, but they are still probably useful <laughs> if you want to search. So we have this different type of data and the different modalities. So we can have text, RDF, and of course um, uh, this this new this new way to visualize data as uh, um, biotic interactions. So I will show you example. Um, so for the analytics, we also, I mean, you have seen a few papers, people use a language model. So if you come up with a natural language question, sorry, um, then the system try to understand what is the, the entity type of the answers you would expect. And it will, um, while you will fetch everything into Medline, PMC, Platzi, and the different collections, um, is going to try to spot and extract the right answer in the in the uh, document set. So it's not generative language model, 
we would like to avoid generative language models because they hallucinate, and that's why we rely only on transformer-based language model. Okay, and I'm happy to answer your question. So this is an example for uh, a question, which is what diseases are associated with ticks? So I think you know ticks are vectors of uh, many uh, very nice uh, patho pathogenic function. Um, so that one is a um, is a one that will spot into platzi. So uh, Borreliosis is one of the very known uh, um, uh, issue with the with the ticks. Um, so relatively uh, a positive answer. There you have a statistical estimate. 0.17 is not necessarily very good, but but you can use the estimate if you want. The other type of analytics that we have on top of Sibyls is the um, uh, ability to explore biotic interaction. So in that case, it's a, it's a pollinator uh, in, in that particular case. But we can we can try to to uh, um, uh, let's say have a broader view about your uh, biotic interaction. The SparkQL endpoint today is loaded with only a sample of data. As I told you, we are not yet able to work at the level of uh, 14 billion uh, annotations, but we are working on it. Um, so one of the key challenges that we have, actually, due to the fact that we have the, the let's say, the stochastic model with machine um, uh, language models on the one hand and the SparkQL endpoint on the other hand, is how could we combine them? So um, this is a concern today. So we have the RDF graph. This is purely symbolic. And then we have the, the uh, statistical representation. And one of the issues is really to try to leverage both in parallel. So if you take any question, like uh, what, what, what uh, disease are caused by uh, um, ticks, then you, you would expect to have Borreliosis, but you also would like to, to get things like encephalitis. Huh? Many, uh, there are many of them. So interestingly, I show you an example with Borreliosis as an answer with Platzi. But if you would query the SparkQL endpoint, then you would get an answer like here which is tick-borne encephalitis. So the SparkQL endpoint would not give exactly the same answer like the, the uh, uh, language model, actually, but both are valid. Another challenge is how do we merge them together? Uh, of course, we can display it to the user, but we'd like to be a little bit more specific than that, maybe try to combine them both. Okay, the one that, that is typically what you get with either of them. Um, okay. Um, so this is if you want to try with the uh, OCRISE images. So if I if you go there with shark phylogenetic trees, then you will end up with this type of images, like the JPEG and so on, which are actually about shark and, and phylogenetic trees. Um, that's it. Um, so we, in a sense, Sibylus is probably very useful if you want to work with species or any trait, because we annotate a lot of trait. Um, uh, taxonomic treatments are really um, well covered. And of course, we use these different taxonomy. Um, we are still struggling to try to work out with the sequences. We find sometimes sequences within supplementary data, but we still have to mature the product to search sequences. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just saying that it's about to end. Um, so in conclusion, um, what I say is that, um, so biodiversity PMC is a significant step towards the One Health library. You know, everybody's struggling to get a real One Health library since the COVID stuff but actually it does not exist. Huh? No, 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 nobody has really uh, made it happen in a sense. Uh, you still have this divide between the, uh, let's say the biomedicine on the one hand and, and let's say general biology on the other hand. And I think we are moving that direction with, with uh, biodiversity PMC. So we have powerful API. Um, everything is uh, creative common CC0 uh, or CC4.0 by, I mean, it's like this. So. Um, Everything is available. Um, Sometimes, I mean, we apply the, the, the licensing from the publisher. So uh, there are things that are not available, but it's really not our fault. Um, so a growing number of resources and services are being added. So I mentioned the new journals. We, I think it's already much larger than PMC, but it should grow again. And we have this effort towards combining together the, the cemented web technologies, which are very nice for machine, maybe not that nice for human always. And in parallel also to, to combine these, let's say, uh, uh, transformer-based uh, natural language tools, which are, I think, very promising uh, for, for, for computer and human. Um, thank you very much for your attention. These are, uh, it's very strange look and feel, but okay, these are the people who contributed, uh, thanks to, to, to Bicycle. Uh, 
And I would like to thank you, audience, for uh, the attention. Thank you, Patrick. Your questions? Or comments? Um, yeah, Nicole? I saw on paywall mentioned as something that you were planning to think about or collaborate with. I'm just wondering what your plans are. Yeah, so, um, so the main challenge with paywall is that it's not chats. <laughs> you know, the problem with paywall is that they store tons of PDF and um, it's probably only a fraction of paywall that we can decently process. But, sorry, unpaywall. You have yeah, 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 but yeah. it's probably a very small fraction of unpaywall that we can decently okay. uh, pro process. So some of them are just bitmap, you know. It's a bitmap, you know. So, of course, we can authorize them, but it's relatively low quality. And so there are many issues working with unpaywall. It's, it's on the agenda, but probably we may focus only on the, the few... Uh, uh, um, articles within unpayable, which are digitally native. Otherwise, this will be difficult. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, Quentin. So this has been the year when large language models suddenly hit the public consciousness. And I wondered if you could just comment on how you think that might influence our, the, the next steps on this kind of thing. Uh, I would say it's what is probably a bit confusing, and even I have seen this, such a signal here, is that um, there is a hype toward generative language model, while most of the time um, they are unnecessary. So we can use them, and they they do reasonably good, but um, it's overkill. You know, it, it's just like they are. Yeah, there are, you, you don't kill flies with machine gun. And actually, uh, uh, most, many things that we have seen here would not need generative model. They may be doing very well with a BERT language model or, of course, a pre-trained language model, but not necessarily uh, ChatGPT. And uh, two things for that. The first one is that ChatGPT, if you work at the level of a million, is expensive. Of course, if you, because it's a few cents per query, but if you have a lot of queries, it's costly. So ChatGPT would not scale cost-wise. It's, it's a catastrophe from the compute point of view. Um, and, and depending on what you want to do, you may go much, it's going to be much quicker uh, taking on the shelf a pre-trained language model, like there are many Lambda or T5. I mean, I've seen here people using T5, so Flan T5. Sorry. And my point is that uh, we got a bit, uh, we are all a bit uh, shaked up by ChatGPT, but uh, probably um, it's, it's a little bit of effort to dig into the other model, but they are probably uh, uh, more reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think, yeah. Last one. Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to. Um give a quick comment and congratulate you on tying your user login to ORCID. Uh, so you, uh, and I want to encourage anybody who is developing systems to do that as well, uh, because uh, if, if you're just using the, the ORCID API, you don't have to deal with the user management and uh, you're making sure that the other person has an ORCID to be used for the general public. Thanks for that. Uh, we have zero user. You know, but, 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 but you said that at some point you need to log in via the the orchid. What mm -hmm. was on one slide, or did I misunderstood that? No, actually, um, so the, everything is publicly available, completely. No, not even an orchid login is needed to 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 get there. Okay, pretty much like PubMed. You know, if you really want to use a login for PubMed, it's you can, but it's very unnecessary. And now you are talking about eBioDive, which is the service to match specimen and, and uh, 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 material citation. That is indeed going through uh, Orc ID, but it's because you want to track who is doing the curation. Is it, for the literature itself, you don't want. So that's, yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, Sorry yeah, yeah, for yeah, the confusion. Yeah, yeah, but, fair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, okay, thank you.